Welcome to Common Sense. Uh, Common Sense is a series of shows that feature interviews with interesting people uh, so that we can get to know uh, who these folks are, what they do, and uh, what makes sense to them and what doesn't in a clear, concise, and direct way. I'm Rudy Breglia, and today I'll be interviewing uh, Executive Director Michael Dowd of the uh, Mental Health uh, Addiction and Recovery Services Board of Lorain County, and the acronym for that is, and I'll be using it a lot, is uh, MHARS. Uh, and uh, Jim Shaper, uh, who is a board member of the board of directors of that organization. Uh, thank you both for your service to the community. And uh, let's start off, Jim, with the, you uh, uh, telling us a bit of your background, where you've been born, uh, uh, where you've lived. What brings you to uh, Lorain County? Uh, certainly. Uh, I was born in Plattsburgh, New York. My dad was in the Air Force, so we were in quite a few places. Uh, probably one of the more interesting ones was uh, Goose Bay, Labrador in Canada. Wow. Uh, was up there for a couple of years. But uh, his last station was in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I worked for uh, PNC Bank. I was in, been in IT since 1978. Okay. Uh, but I retired two years ago. I worked with PNC Bank for uh, 38 years. Moved up to Avon Lake uh, 25 years ago. Okay. Uh, the bank moved me up here and been here ever since. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, would you like to give us some of your background? Sure. Uh, born and raised in uh, Lorraine. Uh, spent the last 30 years living, living in the um, Edgewater neighborhood of Cleveland. Okay. Uh, prior to uh, moving back to uh, the west side of Lorraine earlier uh, this year. Um, my um, educational background, I graduated from Southview High School. Okay. Um, no longer exists. <laughs> okay. And uh, I uh, attended uh, school at uh, the Levin College of Urban Affairs, Urban Planning, with a dual major in social work, and uh, continued on with my education at Case Western Reserve University uh, with the Mendel School of Applied Sciences. And uh, that kept me uh, working in Cuyahoga County okay. for 25 plus years and uh, have uh, relocated back to Lorraine uh, this past January. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, tell us uh, uh, how you became involved with uh, MHARS. Uh, well, it's a bit of a journey. I um, worked for the um, Adams Board, the Alcohol, Drug Addiction, and Mental Health Services Board in Cuyahoga County for 20 years, where okay. I was the uh, Director of Behavioral Health. Um, um, after 20 years, I uh, went um, with the uh, nonprofit arm of the organization that focuses on um, building housing uh, for at-risk populations. They okay. manage about 1,000 units of housing throughout Cuyahoga County. There I served as the chief operating officer for a few years. It was during that time that I was asked to consider uh, this position in Lorain County last January, so I've been in this position for about a year now. Okay, uh, give us some details about uh, MHARS, uh, the organization. Uh, what kind of an organization is it? Uh, uh, when did it get started? Uh, what's the organizational structure? Uh, uh, I know this is a long question. Uh, what staff and facilities do you have? And, and finally, uh, what's its mission statement? Mm -hmm. uh, the MARS board, as you know, is the acronym. Okay. Um, it uh, uh, was uh, joined with another board back in 2019. It was separate. It was the Mental Health Board and the Alcohol Drug Addiction Services okay. Board. They merged in 2019. Okay. Um, uh, boards uh, throughout the state of Ohio, and there are 50 boards throughout the state of Ohio. And uh, we exist, they exist by statute under the Ohio Revised Code 340. And it is a quasi-governmental um, agency okay. uh, with a uh, volunteer board of directors, okay. um, 18 members, who are appointed by elected officials. 
So two-thirds of the board of directors are appointed by the county commissioners, and then one-third of the board of directors are appointed by the state of Ohio. Understand. Okay. Um, now, uh, uh, Jim, uh, tell us uh, how you became involved with uh, uh, being a board member of M MHARS. Certainly. Um, Back in, uh, my youngest son um, had back surgery back in um, uh, 20, um, 2012. Okay. And with that, he got addicted to his painkillers. Oh. And uh, so after suffering for the, uh, with that for about uh, nine months, decided to get help, get recovery. Uh, he wanted to be, uh, get, get out of that lifestyle. And uh, went to detox, uh, okay. and unfortunately passed his fifth day in detox. Uh, after that, uh, I became involved with several gra grassroots organizations, uh, and then joined the Ad uh, Addis Board, which was the Alcohol Drug Addiction okay. Services Board, um, in um, uh, 2014. I got involved with that. So. Uh, when the boards, I, I was a member of that throughout the four years until we merged uh, the mental health and, and Addis board. I got gotcha. you. And uh, have been a board member uh, on the Mars board uh, f during its uh, entire time of existence as well. So I've been a board member of either the alcohol or the mental health and alcohol boards uh, for a period of eight years. Okay. Uh, what are the functions of a board of directors and, and what committees are you on? Right. So uh, the board of directors, uh, we set, uh, along with the Mars staff, uh, we set strategy on what programs uh, will be funded to best uh, serve the needs of the Lorain County uh, residents who uh, require the services. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, then uh, we also approve the service providers that are suggested okay. uh, that are that we're going to be funding, and we also approve the fiscal plans and expenditures uh, that the Mars uh, board, Mars staff, will be making throughout the um, uh, throughout the year. Okay, uh, uh, switch gears a little, uh, Michael. Uh, 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 what are the functions of uh, an executive uh, director? And, and I don't think we covered the mission statement. Uh. The, the, the mission of the Mars Board of Lorraine County is the mission of the board is to improve the well-being of all members of our community by planning for, establishing, and maintaining an effective, efficient, and quality system of mental health, addiction, and recovery services for Lorain County. I th think one of the, the challenges that, that we have as, um, as, as a board is there's services in our name. And sometimes people confuse us that we provide direct services. Uh, we don't. Okay. We, we plan, fund, monitor, and evaluate services under contract in Lorain County with public funds. Okay, all right. We are a mighty organization of 20. I got gotcha. you. I, I thought the uh, organization might be a lot larger. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, so uh, uh, the functions of an executive director are? To advance the mission of the organization. Okay. Um, uh, move forward with its strategic plan and initiatives. Uh, formulate funding recommendations to the governing body. Okay. Um, I don't make the funding decisions. That rests with the board of directors. And then um, also um, supporting my team and uh, being the spokesperson in the community uh, for uh, public behavioral health services. Okay. Now, uh, how does the... Um how does Mars determine its funding for services in the areas of prevention, treatment, and support services? Uh, annually, the board uh, announces to the community a, uh, a RFA uh, funding announcement uh, to the network of providers. Okay. It's, it's through that process we look at uh, the recommendations from the providers okay. and uh, look at uh, the outcomes from 
the previous year funding, uh, ensure that it advances the mission and addresses one of the strategic um, um, items within the, the plan, uh, the 2023 to 24 strategic plan. Okay. Uh, Jim, uh, is there a consumer involvement in uh, uh, the board of directors and what they do? Well, the consumer involvement, first off, our, our meetings are uh, open to, to public. the public. Uh, so they certainly have the opportunity to uh, talk during that, voice concerns. Um, otherwise, other community involvements are the board members going to events, uh, community events that might be around, so we can hear the voice of the community, hear what their concerns okay. and uh, issues are. And then also just reading um, local news uh, to see what things are out there, what trends are out there, what issues people are having. So that's the biggest uh, community involvement that we have. Uh -huh. the biggest, but uh, okay. part of it. Yeah. Uh, in your role as a board member, uh, how important is advocacy on behalf of individuals in recovery from either mental health or addiction? Certainly. Um, yeah, we're always looking, um, to sort of looking out for those areas where people can uh, need the help and uh, certainly allowing them to connect in with the, uh, the areas where um, they, they can get that help. One of the biggest challenges we've had in the past is people in need of help and couldn't find the right uh, place to get that help. Uh, that's one of our uh, big concerns is that people know how to uh, connect with us, connect with our crisis uh, center so that they can get the help needed when they need it and aren't turned away. Uh, because when somebody needs help like that, that is the yeah. time to get right. them the help. Right. Uh, right. Not a day later, not two, yeah. two days later. Uh, it's immediate. It, it has to be immediate. Okay. Now, you started to talk a little bit about this. Uh, um, oh, well, I, uh, let me cover one other thing with the Board of Directors. Uh, you have a fiduciary responsibility, and how, how do you accomplish that? So it's mainly done through um, the, the finance, or we have two different committees. We have a um, community planning com uh, committee, uh -huh. uh, which looks at opportunities, programs that we can uh, try to fund. They'll come up with particular dollar amounts that might be needed for that. Uh, if it'll be reviewed, discussed, and if appropriate, recommended to the finance committee. The finance committee then again looks at it make sure we have the funds, uh, does the same thing, we'll recommend it to the Board of Directors, and then the Board of Directors has, again, the ability to look at, review, discuss that what that financial expenditure might be, does it fit in with the strategies that are the, our strategic direction that we have, mm -hmm. and then uh, final step would be approval by the Board. So uh, it's a multi-step process. Very much so. Okay. Uh, and I think you covered a little bit of this. Uh, uh, how do you stay in touch with the community? Uh, bring uh, those concern, any concerns to the board of directors. How, what is that step? Yeah, it's really uh, that community uh, involvement uh, question that was asked previously, where uh, going to events, uh, uh, keeping up with the local and national news uh, at that point in time, um, and then uh, just ears to the ground and making sure that... Uh, you know, we're hearing uh, what ne needs there are. And the MARS staff also is a tremendous help in identifying what those needs and okay. concerns are as well. Uh, so both board members and staff are out there in the community yes. and, and gathering their concerns. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, what are the priorities for the MARS board right now? The priorities are, uh, one, to enhance the crisis continuum of care in the community. Okay. Uh, in addition, uh, the enhancements of recovery support services, and then uh, with a focus on early intervention and identification of mental illness and addiction um, in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, what collaborations exist to support those priorities that you just described? Mm -hmm. 
the, uh, the Mars Board participates um, and leads a number of coalitions, um, most importantly, uh, the Lorain County Opioid um, Action Team. Uh, we work in partnership with the Lorain County Public Health Department. Okay. Um, other um, uh, providers and constituents um, in Lorain County. Uh, there is also the uh, Suicide Prevention uh, Coalition, and we work with the Public Health Department around the Community Health Assessment and the Community Health Improvement uh, Plan. Okay, yeah. Uh, to, to reflect on a, a sad issue that's occurring in uh, Lorain County, uh, I know there, are, uh, there were 143 accidental overdose fatalities and over 460 uh, non-fatal overdoses uh, uh, in the last year. Uh, what uh, prevention strategies have been supported with funding uh, by the Mars uh, Board? Uh, and I know you're going to be talking a little bit about Narcan, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, opiate antidote. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you expand on that? Sure. Um, the, the Board works um, closely with the Nord Center in, in Lorraine uh, to um, operate the harm reduction clinic, uh, which is located in the city of Lorraine. Uh, that's a program that um, provides literature, um, information, uh, peer support, um, uh, operate the program. Uh, there is a needle exchange component to that as well. Okay. Um, if there's a need to link someone to treatment, uh, that is done um, as well. Um, and then um, education and awareness around the availability of Narcan. Um, our, our energy right now is really focused on ensuring that we have the supply of Narcan in the, in the community for those that need it. And when I say those that need it, it's, it's family members, uh, mm -hmm. It's first responders, it's uh, schools, need. yes, being able to, to address uh, the issues should it be presented. Okay. Um, in addition to the harm reduction clinic, uh, we fund um, recovery housing as well. So we know folks that enter treatment uh, need a safe place to go after okay. they're done with treatment. Understand. And recovery housing is, is part of that journey of recovery. Um, we, we need to continue to focus our energy in that area. We don't have an ample supply of recovery beds, but um, we, it's better today than it was a couple of years ago. Um, in addition to that, um, it's focusing on um, permanent housing for those who have severe and persistent mental illness. Um, when you think about uh, someone who is uh, receiving Social Security income, with, which averages about $841 per month, they can barely afford a fair market uh -huh. rent one-bedroom unit in the community. So um, we step in and try to bridge that gap in terms of affordability. Understand. Give them a place to live. Right. Uh, now, you, you talked before about Narcan distribution sites. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you have, can you give us a kind of a general idea of where they are, which organizations have the Narcan, and uh, I know you brought with you a, mm -hmm. a training aid f for Narcan uh, uh, administration. Uh, the Narcan kits are available at the Lorain County Family Planning, uh, Lorain County Free Clinic, uh, Lakata Way, the Nord Center, the Harm Reduction Clinic, Lorain County Public Health Department, uh, Let's Get Real, which is a uh, peer support um, agency, and Road to Hope, which is a recovery housing um, environment. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a police departments, fire departments, they also have the yes. Narcan. Uh, yes. I know it's a, a wonder drug in that uh, you have an individual experiencing mm -hmm. an overdose uh, uh, that, uh, you know, they'll administer the Narcan and the folks will wake up and be fully functional. Mm -hmm. Correct. The Narcan kit um, is available at no cost. Um, in the kit is a uh, DVD uh, on instruction 
also a small booklet is available on resources that's available um, in the community. And then the nasal spray, and it's very easy to use. You simply just open it up, you take it out, there's a, an adapter here, and you push it up into one of the nostrils. Okay. So it's one per nostril. Unfortunately, with fentanyl Could being, you hold that up so sure. the viewers can see that? Okay. It's often taking more than one dose of Narcan to re reverse the effects of, of the, the overdose. Okay. So um, we are encouraging um, folks to have at least two on hand. Okay. Um, so these would be family members, uh, people, just members of the public who are interested in, in having the, uh, uh, the opiate overdose reversed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, how many suicides have uh, occurred in the last year in Lorraine uh, uh, County, and uh, how does those numbers compare to other communities in Ohio? Uh, last year, in 2021, Lorraine County experienced 44 suicide deaths. And the state average in Ohio is 13 deaths per 100,000 population. In Lorraine County, we are at 16 per 100,000. Uh, really unfortunate. Um, it's unfortunate, but I, I need to add that we are seeing uh, the numbers shift from uh, the young adults and adolescents to um, older adults. Oh, okay. So we're seeing some um, uh, positive signs as we talk about the youth in our community. But the bottom line is uh, the numbers still are increasing in terms of total suicides in the community. Okay. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, as a board member, what are your thoughts on the increase in uh, uh, suicides and overdoses? Yes, um, well, I think the, the pandemic uh, certainly added a lot. That Made isolation worse, yeah. uh, aspect of it uh, hurt both the, the suicide aspect of it as well as the addiction uh, aspect of it with the overdoses. Um, Probably my biggest concern on the overdoses is really the fentanyl. Uh, it's, it's become so prominent. Uh, people may or may not know that they're taking it. Yeah. Uh, and it's much, much more potent okay. as far as an overdose perspective um, than heroin um, uh, is. Uh, so that's one of the biggest concerns. And unfortunately, we're not truly testing uh, the overdose deaths uh, so much from a fentanyl perspective. Hopefully we can do more of that so we can understand the true uh, breadth of this issue uh, with fentanyl. And then also uh, hopefully from uh, try to get some control over it uh, from how it's getting into this country. Because it's not only a Lorraine County issue, it's nationwide yep, issue. Yeah, na nationwide. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, uh, how does the uh, MARS funding impact uh, people in Lorraine County and in, in, in the public? Behavioral health care is health care. And okay. we know with the social determinants of health, um, access and quality health care makes a difference in the quality of life. So. Our, our mission is to advance health care and uh, working toward access for the right service at the right time in the community. We have a lot of work to do in that space, um, but um, which we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later is the Crisis Receiving Center. Okay. That's one of the measures that we are bringing on board to bring some effect change in the community. Okay. Uh, the uh, 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 you mentioned earlier the enhancement of the crisis continuum of care is a priority for Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, what does this mean for the community? Uh, um, the crisis uh, continuum of care involves two populations, both adults and children and adolescents. Mm -hmm. um, we have recently um, initiated a mobile response 
uh, stabilization services, um, outreach for children and adolescents in partnership with Applewood Centers. Uh, they're based out of Cleveland, but they have an office here um, in Lorain County. Um, due to workforce challenges, the, the, the mobile team is not operating 24-7. It's available um, 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Okay. But the goal is for us to have that uh, mobile outreach available 24-7. 24-7. Right. Uh, the goal behind that is the, uh, once the child or youth is um, identified as being in a crisis, uh, the mobile crisis team is able to uh, assess, triage, link to services, and follow that youth in the community until uh, they have that appointment, um, outpatient appointment. Or if it's inpatient stay, they'll stay connected with that youth until uh, they're linked with the provider in the community after discharge. On the adult side, we have an existing Lorain County mobile crisis team. Uh, that operates, but we want to expand that further. Uh, we have some partnerships with a couple of the uh, police departments in the southern part of the county where the mobile crisis team, because of uh, the challenge with you know, the distance, are able to communicate with the officers in real time if they are encountering a psychiatric emergency in the community 24-7. So uh, the North Center is the provider of that service had made laptops available uh, to the police departments and Wellington Village, or the Village of Wellington, is one of those police departments. Okay. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, during your tenure as a board member, uh, what changes have you seen uh, with Mars uh, strategy on improving the continuum of care? Well, I think, uh, and this really almost goes back previous to the, Ad uh, the Addis board as well, with it being two separate boards, one of the most common things um, in this area is a dual diagnosis. Uh, okay. Not only is somebody have an addiction, but they also have a mental health uh, disorder as well. Okay. Um, with the two boards being separate, um, they tried to always try to keep that continuum of care or that dual diagnosis linked together so that the people were getting the right services. The merge board certainly uh, from a strategic perspective uh, helps that quite a bit. Um, also another thing, and Michael mentioned it, recovery housing uh, has really grown quite a bit um, it, from a strategic perspective for the Mars board over the last couple of years, which I believe is a wonderful thing because as we can, it's proven to keep people um, from relapsing. And the nice thing about that is We've always had an issue with um, the front end door being very crowded. And okay. if we can keep these people that have come through the front door, gone through recovery, or gone through recover, uh, uh, outpatient, and then have gone through the recovery housing, not coming through that front door again, that certainly er uh, uh, eases the burden there. Yeah, it takes some pressure off. And the other thing that I really liked uh, that we've done a lot more of lately is metric gathering. Uh, with the service providers, having them give us the numbers that show the number of people they've had, also the follow through on the amount of successes that they've had so that we can fund the service providers that have proven themselves to be um, uh, successful, successful yeah. uh, with their clients. So that's been a big uh, uh, improvement that I've seen. Okay, yeah. Uh, now to get back to the crisis uh, diversion center mm -hmm. uh, that you mentioned, I, I know it's being planned for uh, Lorraine County. Uh, uh, tell me what this means to the community. Uh, how does someone access this type of service? Uh, I know Cuyahoga County has mm -hmm. something similar to that. Uh, what type of treatment would be available at this center? One of the things that we have been hearing for a while from the community is they want one place to go for services. Okay. And so the goal behind this crisis receiving center that it addresses both uh, crisis mental health and crisis addiction. Okay. Uh, this is an example of a uh, strong public and private partnership. Uh, we have funding made, avail made available uh, with the county commissioners 
Uh, my board has allocated funding as well, both for brick and mortar and to sustain the services okay. over a period of time. Uh, there's funding that was made available through Congress, uh, through Cheryl Brown's office, okay, and then also funding uh, from the state of Ohio uh, with support from both uh, Gail Manning and Nathan Manning. Oh, okay. Um, we still have some work to do in terms of uh, okay. uh, the need for additional resources uh, to, to, for the construction of the project, but we're about 90% there. Um, our hope is to have shovel in the ground uh, by late spring or early summer. This project will be probably 18 months to two years under construction, but what it will do once the doors open will make services available at one location, both for mental health and addiction. It will allow um, anyone at any time to bring someone to the center or through the initiatives that I mentioned earlier, the mobile response teams to uh, identify uh, the need in the community and if the individual uh, has an interest in accessing services, will be uh, made available on site. Uh, the facility uh, will be built on a couple of acres of land that sits on the Nord campus. <clears throat> it will be 16 beds. Uh, withdrawal management services, uh, detox on the second level, and then 16 beds, uh, crisis um, observation. And if there's a need for uh, someone to be hospitalized, then uh, efforts will be made to link them to inpatient care. Um, this will have a strong uh, peer support component to it. Um, at the point of entering the facility and then exiting a warm handoff to an uh, outpatient provider. That's for the broad community. The preferred customer are law enforcement. Uh, we know that in Lorain County, the Sheriff's Department, the jail, is the largest detox provider in this community. Uh, the way that we are addressing addiction in this community is not working. Uh, we need to divert from higher levels of care, higher cost systems. Uh, we are having conversations with law enforcement, uh, with uh, the prosecutor's office, and um, specialized dockets uh, about the facility, and uh, with the goal to uh, direct those who are in a uh, psychiatric or um, addiction crisis uh, nonviolent offender, there's another option available to law enforcement. So instead of incarcerating, which we know is not working, uh -huh. there's treatment options. Un understand uh, uh, the, the um, uh, Jim, uh, is there support for this type of center uh, uh, by the community? Uh, I can't see why not. Uh, what organizations have been involved in the development of the project? Sure. Uh, well, as Michael mentioned, law enforcement uh, uh, from that aspect is uh, is very much behind uh, this option I of would being think a, so, having you know. uh, uh, be able to use it. And in other places, the hospitals, the emergency rooms, where currently many of those people go to, this is again another option. Uh, given this, you know, whatever the circumstance might be. Uh, you know, they're not going to uh, triage wounds and such at this center, but they will certainly uh, help with uh, overdose and, and or other crisis situations that currently the emergency room uh, sees and then that to really is sort of Ill, not ill-equipped to handle it, but can only handle it for only a brief amount of time. So there's not that Emergency warm, room kind of yeah, handling. It's uh, not a warm, there's no warm handoff involved. In, in those types of things uh, as much as you'd like to see it. Uh, regarding the, the community or the organizations that have been involved with the design concepts of uh, this center, <coughs> the Nord Center has certainly been involved. Um, also, Lakata Way has been involved. Uh, we've also had law enforcement involved regarding the design, you know, as far as how they would take, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people that they need to bring to the center in and such. 
uh, and also nursing organizations regarding the spacing of the rooms, the design construct of mm -hmm. uh, the facility. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some of the organizations that have been right. involved. Uh, are you f fairly well along? Uh, you, you have a site, the Nord Center. Uh, where, where is that located? Uh, 6140 South Broadway is the location of the Nord Center. I believe the address is 6130 South Broadway. I see, so right next door. <laughs> right next door. Okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, that uh, do you have uh, architectural mm -hmm. drawings and all that? Are you, you, you to that point? We are wrapping up the schematic design phase. Okay. Uh, we uh, presented the project last week uh, oh, to the City of current. Lorraine okay. Planning Commission. Um, so there's uh, more work to do in that space, but we're probably about 90% done with the design. All right. uh, our hope is uh, to put this out to bid uh, sometime in March. Okay, well, congratulations on that. Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, Michael, uh, tell us about the facts and purpose of the uh, low-cost uh, renewal uh, mental health levy issue number nine uh, for mental health and addiction treatment uh, that doesn't raise taxes, uh, that is uh, coming up for a vote in uh, uh, November. Yes, it's a renewal okay. of an existing mental health levy. Uh, the funding is used uh, to support uh, training and education uh, with law enforcement. Um, uh, training and education with the educators within the school systems for the early identification of those uh, who may be having some uh, mental health challenges in the schools uh, to support our crisis uh, continuum of care oh, right. and um, also to uh, support uh, those who um, are in recovery uh, to be able to live a, a um, successful life in the community uh, with the goal to, uh, uh, in, to support their recovery journey with the hope that they return back home to the natural environment and become productive citizens in the community. Um, this, this project um, also would benefit from um, Issue 9 as well. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we have funding in uh, to support the construction and the support services, but that's only for a specific period of time. Uh, the levy will help us sustain that long okay. term as we work with other community stakeholders around how uh, behavioral health services is reimbursed um, in the state of Ohio. There's a lot of work to do in this space. We, we know that this model isn't sustainable in the long run, but we are prepared to, um, to support this project for about four to five years once the door is opened. Understand. Uh, uh, where is uh, uh, Mars uh, organization located? We are located in Lorraine off of Northridge Road. Um, and um, the address there is 1165 Northridge Road. Mm -hmm. um, we have a small staff of 20. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, our responsibility is to plan, fund, and monitor services with public dollars in the community. Okay. Uh, how can Mars be contacted? Uh, I think on, on the screen, viewers mm -hmm. will see uh, uh, the telephone numbers for different services. They can contact us uh, on Facebook, uh, outreach, uh, email address, uh, telephone, uh, Instagram. Um, if I'm missing anything else. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, tell us, how can uh, Avon Lakers uh, uh, support your efforts? Uh, do you need volunteers? Mm -hmm. uh, what do those volunteers do? Um, we need volunteers to help us with the placement of uh, signs okay. in, in the community. All right. Uh, we have volunteers uh, arriving to our training center every Wednesday and Thursday okay. uh, until the election from the hours of three to five. Uh, during that time, we're putting signs together, we're uh, addressing uh, uh, mail chase uh, cards, okay. and uh, we are looking for uh, individuals to uh, 
perhaps write to the letter to the editor, um, articles to the to, to newsprint, uh, to assist us with speaking engagements, however they want to assist the Mars Board. Mm -hmm. And would like to add, uh, the mayor of Avon Lake has endorsed issue nine. Oh, mayor okay. Zoldo. All right. Well, that's great. Uh, uh, in summary, uh, for both of you, uh, what are some of uh, Mars' uh, successes and uh, uh, challenges? We got here today with this project because there's a very strong collaboration on Lorain County to, to, uh, to get things done. Okay. Um, you know, when I talked about the public and private partnership with this project, it's truly a public and private partnership. Um, I mentioned uh, the governmental ed, um, agencies um, that are part of this, but we have funding through a couple of foundations and then also a, a donor um, in the community has stepped forward as well. Wow. So I'm very proud to, uh, to, to, uh, to be the executive director um, of the Mars Board. I think this is an exciting time for us. Uh, we are... Uh, talking about making a change um, in our community in terms of how individuals access uh, behavioral health crisis services, but it's not just in Lorain County. Uh, we are seeing movement nationally around a model of uh, service delivery for that at-risk population. We know historically going to the EDs, ERs for treatment, going to jail, it's not working. Um, we are the experts in behavioral health. Um, okay. So we're, we are changing how that um, service is accessed, which means we're taking that burden on as well. So when, you, when I mentioned earlier around sustainability, okay. we can do it in the short run, but in terms of sustainability in the long run, we need to see some changes in terms of the policies. Understand. Uh, Jim, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Well, to me, uh, every life saved is a success you uh, bet. for the you Mars bet. Board. So that, that's something uh, I'm, I'm extremely uh, proud of uh, and, it's, and worth my time uh, that I donate. Uh, regarding challenges, um, I think one that we haven't mentioned um, is the disparity that we have within the um, minority community in getting uh, the correct, uh, the, um, the amount of medical care uh, that's needed. So that's one thing that the Mars Board continually works on. We have a special committee for that um, to try to address uh, the disparity that uh, the mi minority community uh, has regarding uh, getting and seeking help, health care. So that's definitely one of the challenges that hasn't been mentioned that I thought I would bring up. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I want to congratulate both of you and your organization for the really uh, wonderful work that you do. And, and uh, on behalf of uh, Lorraine County, uh, I thank you for doing that and spending your time and effort. Thank you for thank the you, opportunity. Thank you, Okay. Uh, and thank you for watching uh, Common Sense. Uh, please give us some feedback on, uh, on the show. Uh, if you'd like to appear on the show or you know interesting people uh, uh, who would like to appear, please give us their contact information. Uh, our uh, emails uh, will uh, addresses will appear on the bottom of the screen and our uh, uh, website uh, for uh, uh, the Mars uh, board uh, will also appear. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for watching and remember, uh, seatbelts save lives. The preceding program was presented to you by a community producer. The statements, views, and opinions expressed were not necessarily those of ALC-TV or the City of Avon Lake.